This is Higher Maths, Unit 1, NAB, Outcome 3, and it's on the, the differentiation section. Uh, we're going to do question 10. Question 10 asks us to find the stationary values of the stationary points of the function fx is equal to 4x cubed minus 9x squared plus 6x and to determine their nature. Okay, before we start uh, into that question, what I'd like to do is to show you really what the question's asking us to do. Okay, so what I have here is a, a drawing or a graph of the curve uh, y is equal to 4x cubed minus 9x squared plus 6x. Okay, so that's the curve in question. And what we have to do is to find the stationary values, and the stationary values are the, the turning points or the points of inflection on the curve. So if I look at this curve here, I can see that there's a turning point right here. Okay. And I can also see that there's a turning point here. So there's two points that I'm interested in in this question. What I'm going to do to try and find out the coordinates of the points, I'm going to set the gradient equal to zero because the gradient at these turning points is flat. Okay, so the gradient is equal to zero at both of these points. Okay, so when I set the gradient equal to zero, what I'll do is, I'll, uh, after differentiating the curve, I will uh, then find the x values by factorising. So I should be getting two x values. There's one x value for this point, one x value for this point. When I get these x values, I'll substitute these into this equation, where I find out the y coordinate. Okay, The curve is an f of x curve. But uh, you, can, you, you can work out your y coordinate by substituting your x values in here. So by doing that, uh, I've got my coordinates, the coordinates of the stationary point. Uh, through the working, I'll have to justify that that's a maximum and that's a minimum. And I'll do a nature table to, do, to work that out. And beyond that, I'll uh, finalise the, the question with a conclusion. Okay, so, so let's go on with the question and we'll see how we go on from there. Okay. So, first of all, right, what I'll be doing is, I'll start off by writing down the equation of the curve. Okay, so first thing that we'll do is we'll differentiate that. So f dashed x is equal to 12x squared minus 18x plus 6, okay? So, so after differentiating, I was saying that we would set the, the gradient equal to zero. So for stationary points, for stationary points, uh, f dashed x equals to zero. You know, if it was a y we were starting with, it would be divided by dx equals zero. Okay, so what I'll do is with this zero, I'll substitute it into here, okay? And write down this equation here. So remember, this is my gradient equation. As soon as I differentiate, that helps me to find out what my gradient is, and I've already said that the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, I'm going to factorise this to find my x values. So what I'll do first of all, I can see these are divisible by six. So I'll take six out as a common factor, and from there, I'll work out something easier to work with. I'll divide both sides by six, or just divide this side by six by taking that six over here. And that would give me 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Right, from, from here what I'd do is I'd factorise this uh, trinomial. And I can factorise that using any method that I've learned. What I'll do is I'm just, with this one here, I'm just going to put it straight into the brackets. So, two things that multiply together to get 2x squared, 2x and x. Um, or it could be the negatives, but I'm not going to use that. I'll just use the positive values here. And I'll be looking at the one, two numbers that multiply together to get one, one and one. Okay, I'm going to work out the signs here. Uh, if that's a plus, they're both pluses, or they're both minuses. Looking at this sign being a minus, they must be both minuses. Okay, from there I'm going to work out my x values. So 2x is equal to 1, x is equal to a half. And x here is equal to 1. And these should be the values that we had seen on the curve at the start. So they're the x values that I've got. What I'll now do is I'll work out my y values by substituting into the main equation of the curve. So let's go for that. So the curve is 
Yeah. So I'm going to substitute, wherever I see x, I'm going to substitute in a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a half in here. So 4 times a half cubed, minus 9 times a half squared, plus 6 times a half. What that should give me is an answer of 5 over 4, or 1.25. Okay, I can put that into the calculator, you'll have a calculator in the nab. If not, I would just work that through by using fractions. I'll then work out the other point, the, when uh, x is equal to 1. So I'll substitute a 1 in, wherever I see x, and that value there. If I work that through, that should work out to be value of 1. Right, so, so what I've got there is I've got my coordinates. So my coordinates are going to come along. It's going to be a half and 5 upon 2. Uh, sorry, 5 upon 4. And I've got 1 there and 1 there. So there, there's my two coordinates that, that I'm going to be working with. And they were the two coordinates that were on the, the, the curve, on the diagram that I gave you. Okay, so from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and work out whether they're a maximum, minimum, or a point of inflection. So what I'll do from there is I'll work out uh, a nature table. So if I just create a nature table just now, and that's the justification that I need to show which way the curve is moving. Okay, so I'll start with my x values. And the x values I'm going to put in, first of all, will be the ones that I have here in order. So a half smaller than one, so I'll put a half in about here. And the other one is this one here, I'll put in there. I want to know what the curve is like as it approaches a half. And what I mean by that is I want to know what the gradient is. So I'm interested in the gradient, okay, f dash of x, when I'm, I'm coming towards these points here. Because I already know that the gradient when x is a half is zero, and it's zero there, okay? So I'm going to consider a point just before at a half, and I'll say a quarter. I'm going to be interested in a point that's in between a half and one, and that's going to be three quarters. And a point just going away from one, well, I could consider the point at x equals two. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to substitute these values into any of these equations here. So I've got this one here, then I simplified it, simplified it again, and then I put it into two brackets. So I could choose any of these uh, equations here because they're all f dashed x. Just simplified down. Okay, so the one that I'm going to use, I'm just going to use 2x squared minus 3x and plus 1. And all I'll do is I'll substitute the value of x in here, you know, to work it out. Okay, so for a quarter, if I uh, put uh, a quarter into the calculator, what well, that will give me, it will give me 0 0.375. And what I'm interested in really is that that's a positive number. Okay, when I substitute three quarters into the equation here, the f dash x equation, what I should get out is minus 0 0.125. That's a negative, so I'm interested in that's a negative gradient. Okay, when I work through that. When I substitute 2 in, 2 in there, and what I should get out is a value of 3. Okay, that's a positive 3, so that's positive. So what that helps me work out is the shape of my curve. So the shape is going to be positive. So from this side here, it's going to be coming up positive. It's then going to be going flat when it gets to, to uh, x equals a half. It's then a negative gradient, so it's going to go down the way, until it reaches the x is equal to 1, it's flat, and then it's going to be positive from there on. Okay, so that's going to be the shape of my curve, and that, that works well because that's the same as what uh, the curve that I'd drawn earlier on. In here, I'm just going to write uh, that that's a maximum. So it turns at its maximum point, okay, so that's a maximum. And I'll just write the coordinates in here, just so that I keep that together just now. Okay. And in here, that's a minimum. And the coordinates, because that's a minimum because it's turning at its minimum point, and the coordinates would be 1, 1, okay? 1, 1. Right, so finally, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a statement. So I'm just going to see the curve. And what we had was fx is equal to 4x cubed minus 9x squared plus 6x has 
a maximum right, turning point at half 5 over 4. Okay, so that's a coordinate. And it has a minimum turning point at, and here we go, 1, 1. Okay, and that's the question complete. Okay, so what we looked at there is if I just bring you back to the original curve, which looks similar to what we had in the nature table, what we have is we have a maximum turning point at 0 0.5 or half and 1.25, okay? And a minimum turning point at 1, 1. Okay, so that's, that's really what we've been asking to do in this question. Right, let's have a look and see where the marks come along in this question. So the first mark is going to be given for differentiating correctly. So that would be this mark here with this line being correct, okay? Next mark is going to be for uh, setting the stationary points, uh, the f dashed x values to zero. Okay, so that will be this line here. Plus, make sure that you keep the zero in the the left hand side here or the right hand side, whichever way that you're doing your working for this one. Getting the x values is the third mark. Getting the y values is going to be the fourth mark. Okay. There's a way of marking here, if I make a mistake in here with one of the coordinates, then I can tie up these ones here and get a mark for this here. So it'd probably be getting that there or getting that there. So that's an alternative way of marking. The fifth mark is going to come along where I set up my nature table correctly and process it correctly and make sure that you put in its f dash x that you're looking at in here. Right, in there, okay, in the, the nature table, okay, so that, that there is important, very important indeed. And finally, creating a statement based on what you found in the nature table and uh, just communicate, communicating that clearly. Okay, so that's a six mark, six mark question. For the differentiation section, it's out of 11 marks, and what you're required for a pass will be 8 out of 11, okay? So, hope this, uh, this video has helped you, and uh, good luck!